Welcome back guys! Today we are going to take a look at my solar array system including the inverters and how I have connected it so stay tuned for that. So today we are going to go through my solar system. I will divide this video up in three different parts. The first part will be about the solar panels in question and the second one will be about the inverters and the third one will actually be about what I'm going to do in the near future. So basically the, the video I do today is a quick walkthrough of my current system and how it looks as of today because there are a couple of big changes going on. So let's first talk about the panels in question. The solar panels I have currently is 260 watt poly panels and I have 40, 40 of them. The current setup consists of one of the roofs have 18 panels on them and that roof is directed to the west. The angle of the panels on that roof is roughly 15 degrees. The other roof is 20 panels right now I think, yeah 20 panels and that directed to the south with an angle of 21 to 22 degrees. I have two panels that aren't on the roof and that one is actually on the side as you can see here as well and that's for testing purposes. And as you see on the roof as well, I have chosen to do it in two different angles and that's not just because I want it to be in two different angles, that's because it takes up quite a room to have this sort of arrangement where I have roughly 40 panels on the roof. Uh, secondly, the reason why i gone with poly above mono crystalline is that when I bought the poly panels they were half the price or almost close to half the price compared to mono panels if we say money compared to watts. So that's why I went with the poly and they have been working pretty well for me. Uh, they are currently optimized for summer use and that's something you can see depending on the angle on them because I have them on rather shallow angle when I'm using 15 and 21 degrees. Uh, if I'm going to run this all year round I should or I, I do need to have it tilted slightly more upwards but then I cannot have as many panels on the roof as I have today. It's a little bit of a give and take in the area where I live where the sun is actually very very low on the winter and very very high on the summer. Next thing that I have gotten several questions about when running this type of system with this high voltage and in only one or two strings is what happens if you have shadows? What happens if you have leaves on the panels? But as you can see here on this video or in this overview you will be able to see that I have no trees around the house where, uh, that actually could cause any kind of um, shadowing and I do not have any trees that would actually let the leaves go on the panels and if that happens that's not a big issue, I can always go up and fix that. But so far during the last year that haven't happened once, so that's quite good. And regarding snow on the winter, that's a, new, a little bit of a bigger problem, but as I said, I have optimized it for summer use, so I don't care that much if I have some snow on them. On the other hand, the one with 21 degrees, they are steep enough to actually get the snow off. And the, the problem there is that they land underneath the other one and will build up. And the one on 15 degrees, they go off as well as soon as the sun comes forward, but I have actually... I actually had to help it like two or three times this winter, but that's not a big issue either. So I think that's all everything about the solar panel, I hope at least. So guys, you have had the chance to take a look at my panels and it's now time to actually look at the inverter and the, the connections itself. So first of all, bear with me a little bit because it's a little bit of a mess right now and I'm in the phase of actually changing everything to the final product. So first of all we'll take a look at the inverter and I will try to handheld the camera because it's a tight space and it's not that easy to actually film and do the same thing and actually talk at the same time. So here we have the full system and it's actually divided in two parts and first of all if we show you this panel on the side here is kind of my first test system that I did build and it consists of a PIP 4048 4 kilowatts inverter that is an off-grid type version and if we start from the top we have the incoming PV arrays on top 
where we have all the fuses. And then we have the inverter there. And the next phase is actually the AC ingoing to the inverter. And that's a switch and a fuse in that box. And the next one under is the AC outgoing from the inverter. And that one consists of a fuse. It actually has um, ground breakers and normal fuses as well. And of course, this one here is the battery box where we break the battery. So this is basically the first system I created some time ago for actually starting to test the panels and I started out with 4 kilowatts of panels. And that system worked great. Unfortunately it's just sitting there on the wall right now and not being used at all due to the fact that I really don't need it. So basically as you can see it's actually tied on a separate panel and can be removed. And that's why that panel actually has so many cables hanging loose because that's some of the incoming panels or incoming wires from the old system. So now we take a look at this big system instead. And the main component of this big system as you can see is the MPP Solar 10 kilowatt hour, 10 kilowatt uh, hybrid version. And even though the hardware in this beast actually work pretty pretty darn good, the software is nah, it's not good at all. I don't like it. And the fact that the support of the unit is, I would say, lacking as well. Because they, they really don't answer the questions that you ask them about stuff that is not documented. Or about bugs that you have found in the software. They, they just ignore it, kind of. So hopefully that will get better in the future. Because I like the unit, but if they don't step up when it comes to the support and actually start answering the questions and start helping out. I doubt they will be selling that many more units. But anyways, this unit here is a three phase 10 kilowatt uh, unit that will take two MPPT strings. And th that's the one that actually is being used for the solar panels on the top on the roof. And as you can see here, there's one string in going there and there's another string in going there. And that is actually tied into those boxes here. The PV1 that consists of 18 panels and the PV2 that consists of 20 panels right now. And of course we have the master breaker for the panels here. It's a 1000 volt DC breaker and we have the ones here is actually for um, lightning strikes. So they protect both um, the, the incoming wire and it also connects between them as well if needed and that's tied down on both of the panels. Um, this system here actually have a PV breaker as well so it actually isn't really needed but I did add it as a secondary measurement anyways. Uh, the system is also of course connected to the battery here it's 50 square millimeter cables and you have the master switch here for the batteries and it goes then down. The power to this inverter is connected via those two rather large uh, three phase connectors that can be switched in between each other. They are connected to the master incoming here is 10 square millimeters uh, 5 wire cable and this outgoing here is 6 square millimeter cable. Um, this, gener this hybrid inverter can send power from the solar panels to either the battery or to the grid or to the load output. So that's something you can do. And incoming of course have uh, fuses here as well uh, or breakers as they call them. So, so that's basically the inverter part and the solar uh, panel import. Um, and that works pretty darn good. The incoming master switch, I add an extra one here so I easily could break it if I need it. The outgoing load goes into this box here, AC out, and it consists of a breaker, an earth uh, protection unit, and several, several fuses. This is actually not tied to that much, it's tied to this box here that goes into the house and actually supports uh, power to the servers and the TV and some parts of that. 
and this is just a secondary part so I could actually switch between the UPS turn it off and the grid on this one as well if I need and then of course I have a couple of outlets here that I use in the garage right now and this all is going to change because the plan is actually to have an automatic transfer switch and actually use this inverter to power the whole house. Unfortunately I could peak up to 4 kilowatts on a phase and this inverter only do 3.3 so I'm not sure how to do that yet. I think that's the most of the parts when it comes to the inverter. Of course you have not seen the battery bank yet and I'm not going to show you that today because that's another video. Everything right now is hooked up to this computer for monitoring and that's why I have this many cables here because I am testing some software and I'm also working on some new software for this system. So let's see about that. Um, one note is also that the AC out here is actually connected to this inverter here as well if I want to run it that way. Um, the two panels that you saw earlier on the side of the house is actually feeding this small MPPT charge controller right now and that's merely for testing purposes because I want to see how this actually performs and it does pretty darn good job for what the price on it is uh, and that feeds the battery bank as well. The inverter itself to hook it up to the grid is very very simple because it's just a matter of having its own fuse here on this um, fuse board that connects it to the grid. You're not allowed to connect otherwise. So I have 16 amp three phase fuse here and that's what connects this uh, hybrid inverter to the actual grid, nothing else. But to be able to actually sell stuff, let's take a look at how that set up. So basically this is where my power comes into my house in this big box. In Sweden, to be able to sell the power, you need a couple of things. First of all, you need that sign there that tells that there is electricity. And you need that sign there that also tells that this is actually the switch to switch it all off. And you need that type of switch that you can lock. That's everything you need to actually be able to hook the system up to the grid. When that's actually added, the meter, oh, sorry, the, the, the two stickers, this one and this one, and this switch here, they come and sh exchange or change this meter to a new one that actually can do both um, incoming and outgoing electricity. And when that's done, you're actually free to actually sell everything. Uh, as you can see here, I have another test unit going on here, a Raspberry Pi that actually measures the current going in and out. And that's just merely for the program that they're working, and that's why there is so many cables in here as well. Um, it's not high voltage, it's just Modbus connected, so no problem there. So guys, that's basically it for this today. Uh, I have now gone through the part 1 where we actually talk about the solar panels a little bit, and the part 2 where we actually talk about the inverter and a little bit of the components, not that into the deep. Um, if you want to see how all this is connected or hooked up, I would be in down below have a link to my web page and on that web page I will have some sort of schema that should be able to quickly show you how everything is hooked up and hopefully you understand. If not, comment down below and I will try to answer it as good as I can. Even though I have done a major part of this system it's actually approved by an electrician so don't worry about that that that's totally fine and every part that is actually crucial the high voltage parts when it comes to the AC side is fully approved and the same goes to the actually high voltage parts of the DC side that's approved as well so basically we are now to the end part here of this and I'm sorry if this already have been a long video but let's go through this a little bit quick I'm doing a major changes of this system as of now and first of all the panels. I'm going to add more panels. Uh, right now I have roughly around 11 kilowatt and I would be at around 17 kilowatt when I'm done. I'm actually going to add 18 another panels to the east to actually accommodate so I have east, west and south. Then that should take care of most of the day. 
secondly, I will also be actually moving the main cabinet of incoming power to the actual garage where I have my stuff in. Uh, because at the moment I cannot do the switching and the inverter is actually roughly 100 meters away from the incoming power so it's a little bit tricky for me to actually be uh, switching on and off the inverter to actually feed everything to the house. Right now I need to be dependent on the inverter actually having excess power from the battery bank and feed that back to the grid. And that would most likely be some of the biggest changes that will be done in the near future. It might be that I even add up another inverter, another 10 kilowatt hour inverter, but that depends on MPP Solar. Because if they don't give me any support back on my questions, I don't see why I should continue with them. And I'm actually going to search for another brand or just get me an inverter, a charger and everything like that uh, not connected or hooked up to each other. But that's something that the future have to tell. So thank you guys for watching this video. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I actually ask you to do that. And don't forget to press a thumbs up. And if you have anything you want to ask about, just say, don't forget to actually put a comment on below. I try to answer most of the comments as soon as I can and uh, directly, but it depends a little bit on what I'm doing as well. So don't worry if I didn't answer you the first time. I will do it the next time. So thank you guys once again, and i see you next time. Bye. Perhaps I should shut off the video. Cool.